So the last of the two topics in learning objective five is to do with data flow diagrams. And as we can see here, you need to know about level zero, which are the basic um, context diagrams, and level one data flow diagrams. And level one diagrams have some rules that need to be followed when we construct the diagrams. It also tells us here that we need some understanding of the different components of a data flow diagram and how they're used, and also some understanding of how uh, flow of information can be affected in an information system and what impact that might have on the organization. So let's just have a kind of quick look and see if we can make some sense out of these data flow um, diagrams. Okay, so here's a basic level zero data flow diagram. And we can see from the uh, description at the bottom that it shows a relationship between the system user, who's in the user box, Twitter, which is in the Twitter box, and the Alpha Vantage system, which is in the Alpha Vantage box. Now, they're called entities, but we'll get to that in a second. The uh, analysis results is storage, uh, which is like a hard disk. And uh, the bit in the middle is, is kind of showing how the whole thing works together in the system. So we can see information is going backwards and forwards from the user to the stock prediction system, from the stock prediction system back to the user. The Alpha Vantage system is uh, flowing data into the stock prediction system. The information from Twitter is feeding into the stock prediction system and all the information from the stock prediction system is being stored onto a uh, hard disk which is labeled here D and they're the results of the analysis that's been done. So data is being collected from these three different areas into the system and then stored on a hard drive and that's all that this diagram is really telling us. So it's, a, it's the most basic uh, DFD. It's also known as a context diagram because it just shows us how data is flowing through the system. Now there are different symbols. The two most recognized symbols uh, are the ones that are listed here from this diagram from lucidchart.com. So Jordan and Coad use these kind of squares and circles and the gain and sarsen use a slightly different symbol shape for the process. Uh, and the data store uh, just has this extra little line in it, which allows us to put something in there, usually D, D1 for data store, something like that. And the data flows are always just these arrows showing the direction in which the data is moving through the system. So the external entities are the, um, the people in the system usually. The processes are what happens within the system to the data. The stores are obviously where the data is saved on, on hard disks or cloud storage or whatever that might look like. The data flows is the information that, that is moving from one part of the diagram to the next part of the diagram. And usually the exam board would expect you to be able to recognize what these symbols are, what the different shapes mean, and they also expect you to know the rules around um, level one diagrams. Okay, so here's a level one diagram. It's still reasonably um, easy to understand what's going on. This time we've got two data stores. We've got D1 and D2. We've got three external entities, which are all uh, customers. And we've got three processes, which in this case are labeled one, two, and three. So if we look at this diagram, we can see that in the first instance, a customer makes an inquiry about a holiday. 
the availability of that order is checked. So probably what's happening in this process is it's going off to find the list of all of the available holidays for those time periods to those places from a database. And it's producing a list from a search query and it's then sending that back along this line here to that customer. And while that is going on, the customer's details are being checked against the customer records and stored in the, in the data store there. On the second part, we can see this person's now decided what holiday he wants to go on. He's made the, uh, or she's made the payment. The holiday has been booked, so that's the process and the information about the holiday has been saved into a bookings file on uh, a second data store. A receipt has been generated as part of the process and sent to the customer going back along this arrow. The information from this booking has moved from this data store down to a confirmation. The process is that the details from here are then put into some kind of uh, document and that's then printed and those printouts are posted out most likely or maybe emailed to the customer. So level one diagrams are not really that difficult to understand. We can see along these arrows what the information is what that's flowing from uh, one, uh, in this case from an entity to a process or from a process to a data store. Um, from a data store back to a process, from a process back to an entity. So we can see what the information is because it's labeled on the arrow. The arrow is showing us the direction in which the data is flowing. These are the three processes that are happening within the system. This is the uh, data store one and this is data store two where the information is being stored within the system. And you can see it's using these standard symbols that we looked at over here, okay? So we should be able to quickly look at those and pick out straight away which ones are entities, which ones are processes, uh, which ones are data stores, what information's moving through the system and in which direction it's flowing. So there are some rules for level one data flow diagrams. You can see another example of a data flow diagram here. This one is um, about food orders and inventories and, and reports and so on. But it looks very similar to the other one. It's using the same symbols, the same arrows showing the data flow. Uh, the arrows are uh, labeled so we can see what the data is that's moving and so on. The process are listed for us. Again, they're numbered. The data stores are using the uh, symbols that I've put D's in the corner make, to make it easier for us to understand that they're data stores. So here are the rules. Each of the processes should have at least an input and an output, okay? That's why they're processes. Something has to come in, data, that then has to be processed, and then what comes out is information, okay, in, in its simplest form. Second rule, each data store should have at least one data flow in, okay? You can't store nothing, so the data store needs to have something to store, and usually data flow also comes out because, well, it's got to go somewhere. The third rule is that data stored in the system has to go through a process, okay? So you can't just have facts and figures jumping about in this system that don't make any sense. They, okay, they've got to have some meaning and they need to go through some kind of process. And all processes in a data flow diagram will go to an, either another process, so a second process may happen, or it will be stored somewhere in the system. So these are the four basic rules for data flow diagrams. Okay, so they're not that uh, complicated to understand. So if we have a look here, we can see this is a question that came up in one of the uh, previous exams. So it tells us that during the uh, data analysis, data flow diagrams might be created. One component of a DFD is a data store. The question wants us to draw 
and label using the proper shapes that we've uh, already looked at, those uh, universally accepted, recognized data flow diagram symbols for two other components. So obviously, if you write the symbol for a data store, you're going to get no marks. They want two others. Okay, so if we look at the uh, responses, it's not difficult at all. If we know what the uh, symbols are, and if we know what they mean, then we can just pick two of the other three symbols that are used in DFD um, diagrams. So you get two marks per symbol. Okay, uh, you get one mark for drawing it and you get one mark for saying what it is. If you did not draw it because you are uh, unfamiliar or you can't remember the shapes or the symbols, then you're going to immediately drop two marks on this question. Okay, so it tells us here that these symbols are shown in the textbook, but they are also aware that there are other alternative symbols. And if you've used those, then they're also Correct. So you can use whichever uh, one of the, the, the standard symbols that are, are used and you'll still get the mark. So we've got the square one and it's an external entity. We've got the uh, rounded rectangle or you could have done the circle and that's a process. And obviously the arrow is the data flow. Okay, so sometimes I'll ask you to draw the symbols. Sometimes they'll show you a data flow diagram and they'll ask you to pick out which one's the entities or which one's the processes, which one's the data stores, and you'll just have to say what those are. Sometimes, but rarely, uh, they might ask you to draw a, a data flow diagram using the correct symbols, okay? So you need to just be familiar with what uh, DFD level zero and level one diagrams uh, look like, the symbols that are used, what the symbols are and the rules for level one diagrams.